Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the Toast and Happy Friday. Oh my God. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see the smile on my face. If you're listening as a podcast, you can hear the joy in my voice. It is Friday and it's not a lie. It's not a dream. Like we're going to wake up and it's actually Monday. You guys, it's fucking Friday. It's not a drill. We're not going to be like later in the show. Oh no, it's oh, Thursday. Oh, it was Friday. <laughs> I feel like we've never mistaken a Friday because that energy is unlike anything else. It's unmistakable. It's unmistakably Friday. (sighs) Welcome back to the toast, everyone. What a week. It's been a great week, honestly. Productive. You know, it wasn't like the shortest week. It wasn't like the longest week. It was just a week. It was good. It was good. And, you know, it wasn't great. It was good. What more could you ask for? You really can't ask for anything more than what we had. Well, that's true. (laughs) No, it was a good week. I think it was like our first full week not together. So our first full remote week in a while. Yep. And that was hard, obviously. But we got through it together. All of us together. We're all in this together. Some would say devastating. That we're not together. But it's okay. It's going to be okay. We have plans to be together a lot in the next few months. Yeah. So that buoys me. And I might as well like enjoy this quiet time. I might as well. Um, I have no peace and no quiet time. I'm, you know, rearing a child. Right. 13 weeks, left me alone. Ben left me alone with the puppy. And uh, I don't want to kind of slander Romeo's name, but he did bite me yesterday. He's a bad boy. We were actually on the phone on FaceTime. Yeah. And I know he like nips and that's what puppies do. And like for the most part, it doesn't hurt. But no, he caught a thumb and I have a mark and I'm, I was in a lot of pain. He went into the crate. Is it... Him or does he have extra sharp teeth? He's My cheated. Romeo, what big teeth you have. <laughs> he, I don't know. I, I don't have, you know, other teeth to compare it to. True. It's just like, you know, teeth. It's giving teeth. And I don't know. Show it me just, your teeth. What I do know is it hurt. I'm sorry for the hurt. To be, to be hurt in my own home, my own bed, you know. It your was safe tough. space, your sanctuary. Exactly. Well, I'm sure he had his reasons. Just I think like he thought my finger Brew. was the bone. Brew, how is Brew after the great Palmetto attack of 2024? Bruno is good. He's still acting like he didn't see anything. Gaslighting mommy. Really yeah. gaslighting his mommy. But the exterminator was here today, so actually Brew is out of house. Protecting his peace and his toxins. Yeah, of course. Um, he got the boot. Mr. Brew, he's over at Trout's. Who am I? Bruno avoiding the palmetto so that he doesn't have to do anything about it. No, who am I? Who am I? Bruno pretending like he doesn't see the palmetto so that mommy can be struggling out here on her own while daddy's seeing Dune too. Uh, Dune. Can I, we talk about Dune? Like, I feel like when Dune 1 came out, everybody like collectively was like, okay, and like, it was just, it was giving so random and unnecessary. We're like, okay, good luck with your franchise. Now Dune 2 and it's a franchise and everybody's like, Dune 2. Like when did everybody change? I thought we were like always making fun of Dune. I heard Dune 1 was like the worst movie on the planet. I don't know what I heard, but I do know it's based on a book. So that gives it more gravitas. Yeah, I guess. And I guess we're just in Dune era right now. I mean, it's giving duty like the title I don't know I actually think if I took the time to watch it I would like it that's the vibe I'm getting from it that it's quality also do you think two people on this earth you know who are of our age use the word duty more than we do what do other people call poop like I think like s-h-i-t okay okay but if you don't say by the way why can't you say shit because I don't like saying it about poop Right. I think that's super gross. You like to use it more to describe like a pile of stuff. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that we've parsed that out. But do you see people say like poopy? Like what do people say? I think they say what I said. They don't say, but they should say crap. Yeah. But I reserve crap for other stuff. For a pile of stuff. For some, when something's a piece of crap. Yeah. And by the way, things are always pieces of crap especially these days stop it's not made with love the word is more important than ever and we have to protect the sanctity of the word so that it doesn't get like overused and lose its meaning much like other words you know all the time all the time today's show is great because it's friday which means we're just going to be in in good spirits like that sort of you know positivity will radiate throughout the show and it's 
Friday, which means we have Queenie and Weenie of the Week. I've had my Weenie of the Week penciled in my notepad on my phone for about seven days. That was the easiest decision I've ever made, and I bet you could all guess who it's going to be. No spoilers. So many Weenies this week. And usually I'm Queenie first. I lead with Queenie, but I had a hard time with Queenie. With Queenie, welcome to my life. I have three possibilities. None of them are like, it, you know, they're just all decent. Okay, we'll talk about them. We'll talk you through and we'll get to the final answer. Yeah, we'll also get to the Fast Five. How are, how are the stories today? The stories are really good. Love that. They're really, really good. There's a lot to talk about and I look forward to it. And so I don't need to dilly-dally too long. I don't think we're right. ready yet. I don't oh, think we're oh. ready yet. It's been what? I was Three minutes? It's been, oh my God, six and a half. I was going to say, like, let's dive in, but absolutely not. What else do you want to talk about? Well, I made... Pico de Gallo yesterday. I'm sure everyone huge, saw. Huge news for the community. Because I had gone to the farm last weekend and I got peppers and tomatoes. Jackie, you made Pico de Gallo. I did make Pico de Gallo. And I used my new chopper from Amazon. And it just is a gorgeous thing. And then I needed limes. Olivia grows limes. I went over to her house, picked off a lime. My neighbor. You guys are literally living in a commune. Like our lives could not be. It's giving more community garden. Then my neighbor has a garden, so I was like, "Are you growing cilantro?" And and she wasn't sure, so I just went over there. And I don't think there was cilantro. It, I think parsley. You mean, I think you mean cilantro. Parsley and cilantro are cousins, and I might have grabbed some parsley. I didn't put it in though, but it really got me motivated to start my own garden. I think it's time. I actually had a dream about a week ago, I think when I was in St. Bart's, that I started a garden. It was kind of a crazy dream. And then I was on Wayfair last night because I saw... So was I. I got like a targeted ad for like some kids' outdoor toys. So I was like, oh, okay, let me see what this is about. I didn't need it. But I just started searching chicken coop. Oh, please. I Claudia, actually don't think the chicken life is for you. No, I I thought that. I was like, I could never have chickens. Like, I'm scared of a palmetto. And no, I still feel that gross. way. No, the thing is, it's not that gross. I was at someone's residential chicken coop last week. And Ew. it was so cute. And, like, I didn't even realize. chicken coop. Like, someone who had a chicken coop in their backyard. I didn't even realize it was a chicken coop. And then, like, the chickens were, like, so cute. And they had their own things going on. And they didn't make noise. They're not roosters. They don't crow in the morning. And they get farm fresh eggs for breakfast. Like, it's not happening yet. I'm just letting you guys know. I put the search in. Wayfair's not where I would go, after all. Well, I was on Wayfair last night as well. Let me just tell you, they are milking that Kelly Clarkson partnership for all it's worth. Did you see her? She's literally the banner of the whole website. Queen. Looking good, Kelly. Looking good. Queen. We talked about this on Freaking Fred, but we actually didn't make it a story. And it was, it's kind of so major that perhaps we should have. Kelly Clarkson got bangs. Oh, I thought you were going to say Boeing. No, we talked about that on, on Breaking Fred too. And it's also it, so major. Maybe we should make it a story. Equally big as big news. Kelly Clarkson is rocking bangs. And let me tell you, she's looking fab. I saw a picture. I just feel like whenever, like bangs aren't newsworthy to me. I can't explain it. Well, I think, you know, celebrities really abused the privilege of like dropping bangs on people because nine times They're out of ten fake. it was fake. It was clipping. So it's like, cool. It's just like fool me once. Shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. I'm not going to be a fool. Kelly's look real. I, Kelly can never fool me. Like, she never make me feel foolish. She never would. She, yeah, she never would. And even if, like, I was being a fool, like, that's on me. That's not on KC. It would never be on KC. Speaking of KC, KC Musgrave's new album dropped this morning. I know. So exciting. I've been loving Deeper Well, like, I can't even tell you me how too. that song just is so gorgeous and we're back Casey we're back we're back but what's so confusing is she keeps using the one same piece of artwork for the single and then she yes. came out with two singles same piece of artwork and then the album dropped today with the same piece of artwork and if I hadn't done some digging I would have just thought it was more deeper well the song thank you she took I one only picture? know that the album what came out the weird marketing I only know the album came out because Jake Shane was like creaming his pants over it and like talking about it I was like oh I guess the album's out I agree weird launch she took one picture the thing is, I have a very um, complicated relationship with Casey Musgraves because I literally invented her. Like, you hookers, everybody loves her. Like, I really can't get into it. I invented Casey Musgraves from her first song ever released. Di like, you bitches don't know pageant material. You never will know pageant material because you're fraudulent as fuck. And then Golden Hour came out. And of course- What about like Sam Trailer, Different Park? Yeah, of course, That's by the original. way. 
And now everybody goes back and they know, like, follow your arrow, merry go round. Like, you don't know pageant material. Like, yeah. you don't. You never will. I do. Dime star cowgirl, bitch ass motherfucker. Like, I know. I know you don't. Then Golden Hour came out. And, like, of course, minute one, like, we invented Golden Hour. I knew it from the second it came out. It got popular. Of course, it won Grammy. And then, like, she became a media darling, pop queen. Everybody loved her. And then, like, when everybody loves something, it just, like, ruins it when you loved it first. And then I will say, I did feel like the most recent album that I can't even remember the name, Breadwinner. Breadwinner. I was wondering. Starcrossed. Did, Starcrossed. Did she come out with an album between Golden Hour and Now? I'm like, she had to have, but I don't remember it. Exactly. Starcrossed. And like the new fans ate it up. They were like, yes, Casey. And I was just like, I know Casey in her core. I'm like, this isn't who she is. I thought she was better than that. And I, I wasn't boycotting per se. No. I was just not It no longer vibing. served you. And listening this morning to Deeper Well and the album, like, it's Casey's back. Like, the real Casey. And I won't be surprised if, like, her new fans are like, what is this? But, like, this is Casey. Like, this is what she does. Yeah. It's really, really beautiful. I only got through a few songs. I look forward to listening to it more. Yeah. A lot of new music, low key. Yeah, no, a lot of people announcing albums. I was just seeing people on Twitter saying, like, the Grammys next year are going to be like lit Be uh, Beyonce is releasing this country album of course Taylor's new album Dua Lipa had an album like all the girlies are releasing albums Ari's Casey album Graves. just came Ariana. out exactly right so, so like we said that this year I felt like this year's Grammys wasn't highly highly competitive, competitive. you know it wasn't Lemonade versus 25 right oh that was crazy crazy I feel like this next year could be that we're getting good music and I've really been sort of on repeat listening to Beyonce's country music. I know everybody loves, you know, this ain't Texas, and it's so good. But 16 Carriages, like, don't sleep on it. I feel like I'm in the process, like I feel the sort of metamorphosis happening, like, of starting to stand Beyonce, like, for real. It's taking over you? It's taking over me. Like, I'm really, like, when it comes to music, like, I'm so genre specific, and I just love country music. That's the way to my heart. Mm -hmm. That's just, really all I fucking listen to. Yeah. Plus Taylor Swift. But she's got a little country Well, she's in there. country roots. And you're a cowboy like me, perched in the dark. You know? Yeah. But that's not, she's not even the side to country music because she's a country her girl. Roots, her roots. And like when we started standing, she was country. Yeah. So many country influences. Yeah. So it's really kind of a great time for women in music. It's a great time for women in driving because I oh, just okay. get to drive and oh. listen to music. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like right now I've been listening to the Ari album. We can be friends. Me and Tesla. But I'm going to have to switch it up now with Casey. That's where I get to listen. That's why I've been listening to so much music because I'm driving so much. I'm also like in that sort of era. It's, a, it's like people can release albums and they just can't sometimes like don't sit with you just because you're not in that space you know what I mean yeah and currently like I'm in the space of ev the second I walk in my house I put on Sonos and I put on like John Mayer radio so it's very like peaceful low-key not like pop your pussy music and that's what Casey's album sounds like so far so yeah. I feel like I'm really in the I'm, I'm open to receiving that sort of musical energy no it wasn't until a few weeks ago that I was ready for Morgan Wallen's album that came out a year and a half ago the thing is, it's just about where you are in your life. And I'm so, Keith Whitley. Like, I know I'm so late, but I wasn't ready. And now I'm ready. And I'm glad that I waited. I uh, Jackie, Keith Whitley. I'm glad that I waited to meet Keith Whitley. Because at a I different will, time in my life, like, I might have just passed him by on the street. I think Man Made a Bar, though, is probably my favorite song from the album. Obsessed with Man Made a Bar. Been obsessed with it for a while. And I think we've actually talked about how much we love it already. We were talking about how much we love it and I loved it. And then you pointed out a lyric. I don't think I actually understood what Eric Church was saying. He kind of like mumbles his words. He's like low-key giving like drunk energy, slurring. And you gave me a whole new appreciation for this song. Oh. It's really like the lyrics are like the sweetest so song. Sweet. It's God made the world in seven whole days. Oh God. He said it oh was good. I bet it was great. It was just like cute. Like God's God like made being man, so low key. And man got lonely. He said, please, Lord, if I could only have an angel to hold in my arms. So God made a girl his best work of art. Oh, but he didn't make no place to go when she breaks your heart. So man made a bar. Like, cute, cute. Super cute. Like, okay, respecting women. Right? Like, you think the song Man Made a Bar. Yeah, no, it's giving, it's, it's got layers. It's giving respect for women. 
Oh my God, you just reminded me of something. I, I had like kind of a, a kind of like a mean hot take I wanted to say. Please don't let me so, get in your way. People on TikTok were, um, you know, discussing the potential ban. And of course they were advocating um, like that they wanted it to stay because a lot of people like this is their job. Um, and some of their content like really was, they were advocating against the ban, but it really gave the ban a good reason. They were being so like really, the thing is I, there are merits on both sides, like as to why it should stay, why it should go, yada, yada. But to sort of deny any of like the actual um, legitimate concerns, reasons for why it should go. Legitimate yeah. concerns uh, about the platform. Like it's just, it's silly and it's irresponsible. And like some of the content I saw people make, like, okay, you're jealous. Like towards the congressmen. It's like, you're jealous that like we're on TikTok. Like, okay, please. It was so cringe. And I was like, you know what? Maybe we should be done with this It's app time forever. to go. It was really embarrassing. Yeah. How are you feeling about the TikTok ban? Like, do you feel differently than you felt early in the week? Like more zealous, more anti? No, no, no. I'm going to let the chips fall where they may. I heard like a bunch of rich people are putting together a group. I feel like this happened four years ago. I remember yeah. during the Trump presidency, he also was like, we got to get rid of it. So I remember they were Oracle. Or, were putting, yeah, and remember? everyone was like, Microsoft will buy it. And now it's like and Microsoft never is again a name that's in the mix for like a company that could afford it because the other companies that could afford it probably because of antitrust laws won't be able to buy it like Meta or right. Google. So I had seen, you know, a bunch of wealthy people putting together a group to try and, you know, it's a great, great business. Like if you can buy it, buy it. Um, so I don't know. I, I don't know. And at the end of the day, if you and I had heard, if you really look into the actual bill, people are just like being dramatic on social media. It's really not a TikTok banning bill. It's a TikTok regulation bill, just forcing the app to change certain things about their privacy laws and like their data collection to make it better and safer for everyone. It's really not a ban. But can they do that and ByteDance still own it? I don't know. So it's a forced sale, not a ban. Mm -hmm. It's either a ban or a sale. Those are the two options if the bill passes. I just feel like, my God, how... It, lame like we have been talking about this for four years get it done like you obviously there's an issue like take care of it the government is so slow yeah and it's like what happened in like these four years how much right. information did they get and they've been bad Not that whole that, time irreparable damage being done like to yeah. people's psyches mental health and the overall culture some of the worst takes i've seen in my life yeah so oh actually when i was oh i thank you for reminding me something else i wanted to talk about when i was going on a you know, research and development mission last night, seeing what people were saying about the TikTok ban. Now, I did see a bunch of, you know, pro-Palestinian content creators saying, actually, the Zionists are doing this because they want to buy the platform to control the media. And they were like, bear with me. And they had like all this sort of evidence. I'm like, you guys are some of the dumbest people I've ever met in my life. Like, it was so crazy. It was so anti-Semitic. Like, these people think they're being slick because they're saying the craziest shit, but they're not saying Jews. They're saying Zionists. Right. And so people they really getting, fall for that. People really think that yes. there's a difference. And then there's a handful of Jews who are like, not all Jews are Zionists. So it's not anti-Semitic. Like, no, that is how we've packaged up anti-Semitism for right. the modern age. If you can't see that, I can't help you. But that's no, the like, case. Anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. Anyone who says... No, it's not. Like, that's where it's, that's where the anti-Semitism starts. Right, right. No, and if you just think about them replacing the word Zionist with Jew, you're like, oh, okay, 1938. Like, it's giving the same energy. Yeah, just replace the word and you'll, maybe you'll see. Maybe still not. Maybe yeah. not. Can't help you. But maybe you'll see. Think about it that way. I don't want to go down this road in terms of the conversation because I would like to save it for my weenie of the week. Of I think course. We all know. I'm so excited. Like, let's get to the stories because I've got this sort of passion, this sort of energy to get to the end of the show to share my weenie of the week. And I bet you can't guess who it is. No, I'm excited too. But let's let the stories have their moment because there's a lot there. So just set I'm it aside. I'm not rushing. I'm not rushing. Set it aside. And you know what? Maybe the stories will inspire new, new nominees. Definitely not. Like, I'm so, maybe no. for Queenie. Maybe I'm for Queenie. So, I'm immovable in my weenie I think we know but without further ado here are the fast five stories that you need to know and the fast five stories that you need to know are brought to you by ASPCA pet health insurance your pet is one of a kind and so is their journey while every playful moment is a memory in the making sometimes our cats and dogs are a little too good at getting into trouble and that's why you should check out ASPCA pet health insurance I will say on a personal note I did not have pet health insurance for Theo and that really uh sort of screwed me I'm not gonna lie um 
And before I even met Romeo, the first thing I did was get pet health insurance. ASPCA Pet Health Insurance Program offers customizable accident and illness plans, making it easier for pet parents like you to help your pet get the care that they need. The ASPCA Pet Health Insurance Program has been around for over 18 years, and they've helped more than 600,000 pets during that time. They allow you to customize your plan, helping ensure that your pet's plan is as unique as they are, because vet bills can really add up, especially when you're least expecting it. So I feel like when I went through my horrible thing with Theo I feel like that reminded a lot of people to get insurance I was not insured I really did get screwed and of course I was that type of pet parent who would have done anything for um your muffin for my angel but it was a bad spot to be in and so being proactive and ASPCA is I feel like a really really trustworthy company when it comes to pets um we actually just had a great experience with their uh what's it called Jackie Pesca, no, uh, poison control line. They yes. really are, they're a very trustworthy pet company. When Brew when has comes, his, had his incident, we were on the phone with ASPCA. So use their app to submit a claim. Explore coverage at visit ASPCAPetInsurance.com slash toast. That's ASPCAPetInsurance.com slash toast. Again, that's ASPCAPetInsurance.com slash toast. This is a paid advertisement. Insurance is underwritten by either Independence American Insurance Company or United States Fire Insurance Company and produced by PTZ Insurance Agency Limited. The ASPCA is not an insurer and is not engaged in the business of insurance. Today's episode is also brought to you by... Oh, that's right. Honey love. Ladies, imagine a bra that actually is gorgeous and comfortable and that you want to wear. You probably can't think of one unless you already own Honey Love. Today's sponsor, Honey Love, has revolutionized the bra game. So say goodbye to underwire and bulky fabrics that trap heat. Honey Love's bra features supportive bonding that eliminates the need for underwire without sacrificing the lift. Plus, they're made with fabric that's so soft it feels like a second skin. You will immediately feel and see the difference. It is next level comfortable. You will forget you're wearing it. So clean out that bra drawer with crusty old dusty bras that you've had for 35 years. It's spring cleaning. And for a limited time, you know, stock up on Honey Love. And of course, you can get 20% off your entire order with our link, honeylove.com slash toast. You'll be supporting the show, supporting your titties. And I feel like what's better than that? That feeling when you get home from a long day. I mean, I feel like when it comes to brassieres, I'm very specific. And I happen to love Honey Love. I found Honey Love on a Facebook ad like 10 years ago. I've been wearing their shapewear for years and I recently got into their bras and they're just as good if not better than their shapewear. They have relaxed lounge bras. I really recommend their V bra. It offers the support of a traditional bra without the uncomfortable underwire. They also, of course, have more than just bras. They have incredi incredible comfortable, incredibly comfortable shapewear, tanks, and leggings. So treat yourself to the best bras on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash toast. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off. That's honeylove.com slash toast. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about it. Please support the toast. Tell them we sent you. Treat yourself to Honey Love because you deserve it. Thank you, La. A pleasure. Our first story, some major news in the world of Meghan and Harry. Oh, oh, yeah. Meghan Markle is going back to her pre-royal roots with a new lifestyle brand called American Riviera Orchard. So the next project from one Miss Meghan Markle is a new lifestyle brand called American Riviera Orchard. On Thursday, the Instagram account shared a teaser video and a nine image grid of the logo seems to be... Um, sewed onto a napkin, American Riviera Orchard, Montecito. And the teaser video is giving lifestyle. It's giving Nara Smith. What is, does that even mean, giving lifestyle? Claudia, what the hell? have you watched the, the video? Way, of course I have. I'm obsessed. Let me say, I'm so here for a brand, for Meghan Markle. Like, we know her and Harry, like, love a project. They love to work. They love to make money. I even thought, you know, we're always thinking, like, who can they partner with? Content, content. No, this is what she needs to be doing, product. Like, I love. I feel like we had this idea a few months ago. Like, it's giving Joanna Gaines is yes. what it is. She's going to be doing, like, kitchen wears, is cooking. It? Is I it read wares? in the Daily Mail that she'll be doing a cooking show on Netflix and then selling her jams and goods. Jams? That's just what Daily Mail said. But I, a cooking show on Netflix for American Rare Review era orchard like sounds about right because they still have a netflix contract they need more content and in the video she's cooking in the kitchen you know picking flowers and just being honestly a homesteading trad wife yeah by the way they have chickens she's so by the way i love this i just want to say i hate the name it's so long i don't like the name also because i feel like they're incredibly global and i usually like american in a in a title but in this specific instance it kind of doesn't work no they're uh, that's so true they're globally famous they're obviously like half British as a you know a family. They have um, and Canada. It's, it's oh, ties. Yeah. It's just also too long. 
American Riviera Orchard. A-R-O. It's... And I feel like they have a lot of names associated with them. Archwell, Sussex, yes, Duchess. The Tig. The Tig. First of all, the Tig would have been the perfect name for this. I completely agree. I, I'm sure they had this conversation and came to the conclusion of no, but I feel like there are a lot of names that are within their world that even if it was like Archwell Living, beautiful. Yeah. By the way, 1000%. I, I also think there was definitely like a missed opportunity to incorporate the TIG. One, because there's like brand association that was like her cute little blog before. It wasn't super popular before, but now people know the name because they were like, oh my God, Meghan Markle used to blog. But also it, it seems like actually having a website with content recipes, you know, inspo, photography, will be a part of this whatever it is that she's launching because she's going to have the cooking shows. She's going to need a home for the website, for the recipes. I feel like it's actually a, a missed opportunity. Yeah, no, the whole thing could have been called the TIG and then it's like a, a yeah. harking back to her history. But do you think that maybe they have, didn't do that because it like, it signals steps backwards? It's like she came all, she like, like did the TIG, then she be, did the show and she became a princess and she was a global star and like tried all her hand at all these things, podcasting, reality show, blah, blah, blah. And no. it's like, and we're still going back to the TIG. So you could like, I, and people who hate Meghan Markle like would see it that way, but they're going to see shit that way regardless. I would see it as you're, you know, you became so big and then you're like going back to like this little thing that you loved. Like I would have seen it as endearing. Right, I but really I think- would. The going back, as you said, it's going back. This is at least yeah. A new what's wrong brand. with once once you reach a level of success, like going back to the basics? She just has to think about so much because she's so criticized, but also she's on this. You know, she's this huge platform. Like everybody in the world, not just the country, the world, yeah, is following what she's doing. So she has to think about those things. But I would have loved it on a personal. Level. I would have really liked it too. But I understand the need to like want to be looking forward and launching. This name something, is bad though. Launching something new. At, but the name I don't think captures them. I don't, by the way, when I hear American Riviera Orchard, none of it makes me think of Harry and Meghan. Like nothing, Orchard, I don't think about them when it comes to, you know, oranges. I don't think about them when it comes to the Riviera. And honestly, I think of them more as British. Yeah, maybe like where they live. Maybe they have an orchard and like that's, maybe they bought an orchard and that's what it's called. You're right. Like there are so many words, places, things that I associate them with. Montecito, Canada. Like so many different things, Arch, Archwell, Archie, du Sussex, Duchess. Duchess, yeah, a million words that could have been used. Yeah, so that to me is not my favorite, but I'm I'm super open, and I just wonder. It's hard. Like I think a cooking show is a great idea for her. She also like she has a garden. There'll be home lifestyle, everything, but you need like serious personality and charisma to pull that off. And I think she she certainly has charisma. Like. She Markle is, Sparkle. She has that Markle Sparkle. I just wonder if it will translate because that's really the thing. Yeah, we've never really gotten an opportunity to see her personality shine through. Either she's been acting like in a TV show or like with her documentary, there was so much going on. It was like very high stakes. It wasn't like at home with the Archwells. Like not know? relaxed. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, what everybody said about her, and I really felt like it came through when I watched Suits, is like she has this sort of magic to her. And it's about time she monetized that, for real. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. I think it's a great idea. I think it should have been one of their earlier... The I think it should have been one of their earlier ideas before podcasting. Mm -hmm. It's so on brand for them. So I'm glad, you know, better late than never. It's also on trend, like you said, Nara Smith. Like homesteading is very in the culture right now. And it's it feels authentic because I remember when Oprah came to her house, what was that, five years ago? No, less. She had chickens before everybody else did. Like, I feel like this isn't an inauthentic move where I feel like sometimes when they announce stuff, I'm like, oh, please. Like it's very, it doesn't feel like there's a natural connection. This feels very on brand. She's just like a wealthy woman. And what do wealthy women do? They have chickens, they garden, they cook for their families. They do things that other people don't have time to do, like making their own bread. I think it's a, a natural brand extension, which it really has not felt like a lot of what they do has felt natural. Yeah, I mean, we don't know that she cooked, like I, she's not done cooking. No, but content, I can see it. But I could see it too. I mean, in this picture in her kitchen, she looks like a natural. No, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I think there's a lot of promise and opportunity here. Mm -hmm. I will be watching. And I could see like this be something like I would buy her shit, you know? 
If it's good, yeah. If it's cute, yeah. I mean, she, hopefully it's going to be giving like rich Nancy Myers coastal ground aesthetic. I but feel like that's very her. I think it will be staggered. Like I think the first thing would be a blog and a show. And then if that mm-hmm. does well and people like her aesthetic, like Hots she could come pans. out with like a line of stuff. But I don't think it would be all at once. I don't think that makes sense either. No, but I do feel like there's definitely like a gap in the market when it comes to celebrity cookware. I feel like Chrissy Teigen really fell off after her scandal. We need like celebrity caraway. You know? I don't we need, need celebrity Markle co- X. We I don't need, need celebrity cookware. No, I think not cookware. Like um, vases, bowls. I was just watching a homesteading trad wife. She had the most gorgeous mixing bowls. I was like looking through the comments to see if she said where they were from. Couldn't find it. Looked at her Amazon store. Maybe it front. was American Riviera Orchard. They were really, really cute. But they were looked so heavy. I have heavy mixing bowls. I don't want to pull them off the shelf. No, my mixing bowls are from Amazon. And then I have glass mixing bowls, still even a little heavy. I need like no, just... No, I have metal, like the nesting ones. You have like yeah. four and they, and they store steel. really well and they're fabulous. Yeah, but they weren't as pretty as this woman's pink one. She oh, was no. making Uncrustables from scratch. Of course she was. I love Uncrustables. From scratch. No, I want to say I think the Uncrustables like from Smuckers with all the preservatives and like cancerous hazardous materials make it better like I'm sorry I don't think I would like a homemade like it's okay you made me a peanut butter and jelly thanks you know yeah well she said her kids had never had peanut butter and jelly before but she wanted them to have it so she made it from scratch that's like kind of devastating for the kids well not if they don't know about it no I'm sorry like no childhood is complete without a peanut butter I must have had 6,000 peanut butter and jellies in my time growing up you know what I kind of want a peanut butter and jelly for lunch that's one of like my favorite things I love a peanut butter and jelly you should have one for lunch yeah but like I'm gonna say something crazy is a peanut butter and jelly or like maybe I don't eat a lot of sandwiches so I'm not talking about sandwiches with like tons of deli meats and stuff I'm talking about like two pieces of bread and like something in between like like it's a snack it's literally not filling yeah it's not filling for an adult but a child a is like half your size. I think I, if I had two peanut butter jellies, like that might be like decent enough to fill me up. Maybe. Yeah. No, I don't think that's crazy to say. Okay. Also, but what I want to say about American Riviera Orchard is I don't want to wait long. I need content and I need it now. I'm not waiting months. Agreed. Get it out there. Agreed. Our next story, speaking of lifestyle queens... Oprah, okay, Sonia Morgan. Oprah Winfrey is revealing why she left the Weight Watchers board after nearly 10 years. We also like haven't spoken about we this. We haven't spoken about this and it's time to talk about it, which is why I chose this story. So Oprah Winfrey revealed that she left the board of Weight Watchers after nearly a decade because of her upcoming special about prescription weight loss medications. She said, quote, I decided that because this special was really important to me and I wanted to be able to talk about whatever I wanted to talk about. And Weight Watchers is now in the business of being a weight health company that also administers drug medications for weight. She said, I did not want to have the appearance of any conflict of interest. She admitted in December that she used prescription medication to shed unwanted pounds after fans speculated about her dramatic weight loss for months. She didn't specify. Okay, it wasn't dramatic. That like bothers me so much. Sorry. She didn't specify if she used Ozempic, Wagovi, or some other drug. She said, so I resigned from the board and donated all of my shares to the National Museum of Afri- African American History and Culture. So nobody can say, oh, she's doing that special. She's making money promoting. No, you cannot say that. She wants to be taken seriously as a as a voice, whether it's being critical or praising of these drugs. And if you're, you know, the chairman of a company that has a significant financial stake, Weight Watchers now has like a full telehealth. You can get right. GLP-1 medications. It's fabulous. And they shouldn't. I thought that was a brilliant move. Um, so I, I understand. I find it, you know, odd that she would care more about being taken completely seriously as like a voice when it comes to these sorts of medication than she would about a company she's been really involved in and I would say responsible for a lot of the success in recent years like I find that kind of crazy I find this a little crazy it's like when has it ever stopped anyone promoting something that I have a stake in or an interest in and also if you're being genuine which I think anyone would think that she is because she's on them and they've worked for her so even if she did a special promoting weight loss drugs and she has a vested interest in weight loss drugs like that wouldn't feel incongruous to me it feels like a big to do just based on like some haters opinions and what people (laughs) might say also, I feel like there's a big chunk of this story like not being told because the way I remember it going down was Oprah had lost a significant amount of weight. A lot of people were speculating about whether she used the drugs or not. And it got to a point where it was like Oprah had to say something. And she was on a panel and was asked about it. And she said she wasn't on them and that it was like a cheat to use them. And I remember Taylor Strecker was co-hosting the show with me. You were on maternity leave. And we were so mad because we were both on the drugs and we were like, oh my God, we would have loved to have Oprah as our 
spokesperson. Like we were just mad. And then like a month later, she said she had been using the drug. So she lied, which by the way, not sharing your experience is completely fine. Just don't put yourself in a position to have to be, to have to lie about it. Like anytime yeah. I was I was asked about it, I, I had asked them to cut it out of the podcast because I wasn't ready to share. Like they had asked me on um, Out and About and I asked Joey to cut it out because I didn't want to lie, but I also wasn't ready to share yet. Right. And that's, that's valid. Right. But lying, it, it takes it to like an annoying place. And it was just annoying that they asked her that because like you shouldn't, Somebody should offer that information up. They shouldn't be asked that question. Whatever. So I thought her stepping down had to do with the fact that she like lied, said something negative about the drug, and then came clean. It was like a very bizarre launch. Got it. What does that part have to do with this? Does I it have anything to do with her stepping down? The lie? No, she said, but this is from I her. I thought. That it was because she, they want, she wants people to like hear what she has to say about the drugs, take it seriously without thinking that she's there to make money because she has a stake in Weight Watchers. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of like a facocked line of thinking. Maybe she was just like overworking on Weight Watchers, like having to be always like responsible, having to like acknowledge. Or she's she coming out weight. with a competing thing. But why would you when you literally are the chairman of the biggest one? Could be bigger. I have to say, I saw that Oprah is doing this like primetime special and I'm very excited about it. I would love to be a part of it. Someone, you know, if you need an expert witness testimony, because I feel like every 60 minutes, I just saw local news, like one woman ended up in the hospital after using Ozempic. And now that's like, that's the headline. It's like, sure. One no, woman every had time an adverse effect to a drug. And what about the literally millions of other people who had a fabulous, and that's the only thing that comes up when you Google it. And it's like scaring people straight, you know? No, every time someone has diarrhea on Ozempic, like it's a headline. No, and it's so annoying because with any drug, anything you put in your body, like I'm sure somebody's taking Advil and died. Like that's just what the nature, and we don't say, well, you shouldn't take Advil because one person died. Like we don't say that. Yeah. It bothers me so much. So I'm ready for like a big media push, like narrative being like, we should be encouraging people who are curious about it, not deterring them being like, well, one woman had stomach paralysis. Like stop, it really bothers me. No, every especially when, when the media often minimizes a lot of medication averse effects. Like those, also, every one instance doesn't become a headline. In fact, they're downplayed. And so why for Ozempic, something that's doing way more good than harm like an overwhelming amount of good for people why that would be shown in a negative light I also have like a very hot take and I don't know if people are ready to to hear it but I think it needs to be said because I recorded a TikTok about it responding to someone's like post about Ozempic and I didn't I didn't post it because I just wasn't in the mood for like a comment section from like the ED community yeah but like having being triggered by Ozempic like that's valid. Like if you have had some sort of experience with eating disorders or, you know, really toxic weight loss, fine. Like it's not for you. But, and this needs to be said, and, and I'm sorry, you are the minority. Like it's not about you. Like you need to work on your triggers and, and sort of protect yourself because your feelings about like being triggered shouldn't supersede the actual millions of people who suffer from like the disease of obesity. Like it's not about you right now. So like you being mad and saying like Ozempic scares you, like, that's valid, work on it yourself. Like don't make these grandiose statements deterring other people from investigating in the drug. Like the ED community, their reasons for not, and by the way, every doctor I've ever spoken to said, like if you had any sort of eating disorder, whether it's like binge eating on the one extreme or anorexia, bulimia on the other extreme, like these drugs are not for you. They would never ever prescribe you. So this isn't for you, this isn't about you. So you can have conversations about like what it makes you feel like, but to make these grandiose statements, like it's not about you, like it's for, you're the minority here. It's for the literal millions, millions of people, and I'm talking about America, of people who have obesity. It's yeah. a disease. No, and if you, you wouldn't can't discourage, see, you, you wouldn't discourage someone else with a disease from seeking medication to cure or help or ameliorate that disease. You wouldn't discourage someone, you know, with cancer or with any any disease. It's a disease, just like we. You have to think about it like that. Thinking about it like treating a disease with medicine. Right. And if you can't see that and not put yourself at the center of it and realize that it's for someone else and not for you and also not be offended by it and then like take up action against it, maybe the internet's not for you. No, it was real. Like I, I need the ED community. First of all, and I come at this as an ally. Like I need you to decenter yourself from this conversation. It's not about you. So just take a step back. Know that these drugs are not for you. That's really a lot of the issue I have with every time Jackie Goldschneider talks about Ozempic because the media uses it as like a, you know, as a headline and 
Jackie Goldschneider because she is a big and important voice, like in just the ED yes. community. We all saw her story on Housewives and are interested. I in thought what it she was powerful. Have to say. Yeah, her she had a crazy experience. I actually thought it was really powerful. And so every time she talks about it, it bothers me because it's not for you. Yeah. And you are the last person on earth a doctor should or would ever prescribe it to. Like, right. it's not for you. And so the fact that it exists and it would be bad for you, like, doesn't mean that it shouldn't exist. You should just stay away from it. I need the the eating disorder community to decenter themselves from this conversation. It's not about you. And I feel like we're always talking about them when it comes to the conversation about Ozempic. And they're also, oh, and you know, I feel like, Every person who has that, that conversation is like, and all the celebrities, like, stop, stop. It's so not about that. And so Oprah giving a voice, and I'm sure it's going to be, you know, people who have lost 100 pounds. That's really what people have lost the same amount of weight on Ozempic than they have with, like, gastric sleeve. Like, yeah. And, it, and it's non-invasive. Like, it's amazing. And I'm sure she's just going to have regular people who have had amazing, huge weight loss with it. And that's the story that needs to be told. So I'm actually so here and for beyond Oprah's the weight loss, special. Beyond the weight loss, like, the health issues that are caused by obesity that just start to fall away when you get healthier heart medication, diabetes, blood pressure, like all these things come down. And it's not just like, oh, I'm thinner and I'm feeling good. It's like, oh, I just added years to my life. 1000%, like I tell, I literally just got my blood work done. Like I, you know, knock wood, knock wood. I'm a healthy 29 year old. Yeah. I, I've never been able to say that ever. But Claude, I mean, if you want, like, this is just another rabbit hole, but there are a lot of people who have a vested interest on people being medicated for all of these things. And it's it's also, bigger than just, you know, if everyone got super healthy, that puts a lot of people out of business. No, it's giving dope sick, for sure, for sure. Big pharma. Also, there's a big rabbit hole to go down as to why these insurance companies are not covering this medication for people. It should win that it's a life-saving medication. No. It should want that, it should be accessible. It should be affordable. It should not be hard to get a prescription for it. It should not be hard to get your prescription filled. And it should not be hard to get your prescription covered. I am so like passionate about this. And it's a disgrace. Shame on every fucking insurance company. I know people who have been on the phone for hours, for weeks, for months trying to get their insurance. People who have had Wagovi prescriptions and have not been able to get it covered since they got it prescribed and they've never been able to fill that prescription. Shame on those insurance companies. And beyond insurance, just the shortage of the drug in general because I think then a lot of people's arguments go and be like well you're taking it away from diabetes people who need it and it's like well if everyone just understood all the benefits of it like why not make more why can't it be as accessible as the COVID vaccine like By when way, you want to make a drug there's more of it and it's not like anything about this drug is like proprietary or that they can't get no. it so like make more it's an intentional shortaging of it when it was first fda approved for weight loss i understood the shortage like because it was an influx of new patients right right, right. okay uh, that's supply Bitch, and demand baby that was four fucking years ago like get it together there's no reason for these shortages and i agree with you that the the argument about like well you're taking it away from diabetes first of all we're not actually and i think it's really important to note a lot of people see this rhetoric about you know diabetes patients and they think of it as like life-saving medication for diabetes patients and like their insulin it's actually not you don't need diabetes patients don't need ozempic to live i just want to say that so an obese person and a diabetic really need the drug a similar amount just i just want to say that second of all if there is a shortage like that's not on an obese person's an obese person it's on the pharmaceutical companies billion dollar companies who can't make more of a drug that's figure high in demand, or they won't make more of a drug that's high in figure demand. it out no they're trying to keep us fat they really are yeah no be fat is good for business that's more food that people are buying it's more drugs that they need to be on that's more doctor appointments that they need to go to it's more surgeries that they need to have i'm telling you claude like no it's for sure all the way to the top and and I think also in the culture, Ozempic has presented a an interesting conflict to the body positivity movement because there are people much like myself who, and and I don't um, take back anything I said, and and I still I think it all still reigns true for me. But like you would have said, like, well, Claudia, you were so confident and happy. Why would you take a weight loss medication? And I think what we're seeing, and definitely for me. Um, and I, I saw a lot of, you know, people who had taken the drug who were really body positive having these conversations too. It's like, well, any big person, well, most big people dream of being thin, you know? It's, we, we made the best of our situations because, you know, we got to live and we want to be, and I'm a happy person. But 
it's not that it was a lie, but it was that we made the most of those situations. Right. And, and we, uh, most big people wouldn't choose to be big. That's what it is. Yeah, but if that's where you are, like you're going to live your life and you're going to, and, you, and there should be a body and positivity be, And you want to be treated well, like a the, human being with dignity. Like. Right, right. And you want to be accepted right. and all that, but that doesn't mean that you're against self-improvement in any way. Right, right. Yeah, no, that definitely no, it's is all very interesting. a little, com it is interesting. I hope these are interesting. There are a lot of interesting conversations to be had that aren't being had in the mainstream because it's all, you know, like woman dies after right. doing and a I million really things, hope, including Ozempic. I have a lot of, I'm putting a lot of stake in this Oprah special. Like she better do me proud. Okay. And I, again, another thing, I don't want to wait too long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, you ready for our next story? Yeah, what number? Three. Yes. Kelly Clarkson is suing her ex-husband, Brandon Blockstock, again, claiming oh, he was yeah. an unlicensed talent agent. <laughs> so she is suing her ex-husband, Brandon Blockstock, again, just months after winning $2.6 million ruling against him last Success. fall. The complaint filed in LA on Monday accuses him and his father's management company, Starstruck Entertainment, of violating California labor law laws, specifically the Talent Agencies Act, by acting as an unlicensed talent agency that booked business deals on her behalf, dating back to 2007. The lawsuit says, based on the wrongful acts and conduct of Starstruck, all agreements between the parties should be declared void and un unenforceable, and all monies previously paid by cross-complainants to Starstruck should be gorged from Starstruck forthwith. Not the forthwith. No, I'm obsessed. Like, clearly he was acting as her talent agent, even though he wasn't an agent, and it didn't bother her when they were in love. But now, like, oh, really? You want to take my ranch? Let's go back, you know, statue of limitations. Yeah. Love, I'm obsessed. And Kelly doesn't take on cases that she can't win. No, and of course, Kelly could, you know, drop these things, move forward. But no, there are bones to be picked, my friend, and we will do so <laughs> forthwith. And it really feels like Kelly is like extremely petty, but in a mature way. And I'm so here for it. Like, yes, one could argue like, Kelly, like, you know, move on with your life. No. And this yeah. is Kelly's business. Like, I understand like uh, turning every stone when it comes to your business and like this man who's just like sitting on money that he actually stole from his wife like she's not letting it like she's gonna seriously take every take him for every penny that he's worth and I support it go ahead and break my heart that's fine eternal sunshine of the spotless mind giving like, Ari. So unkind. So good. That album's really good. So good. So just a daily reminder, stream Kelly Clarkson chemistry. Yeah. You support women in business, stream chemistry. I also saw in my email this morning, I'm on the Kelly distro. Of that course you are. A new remix of her song Lighthouse is out now. Okay. Which is Lighthouse? I don't uh, one know thing it. about that album, I will say, none of the song titles are in the chorus. It's getting Taylor Swift. Yeah, like it's it's hard to know what song she's talking about. Yeah. And I know the whole album. Except her favorite so. kind of high. You're my favorite kind of high. Rushing, Rushing through, through me like a fire. Like and I need, and I need you to know. Wait, hold on. I just want to know this song. I need a do-over. How did it end up? Remember when we had dreams to fly away, but that was then and now our story is just a page. Like a wave, you're always crashing into me, crashing into me. What song is that? I just just play it now. Play a bit of it. It's such a shame oh, I love the song. And and the and who's the, the remix with? Her remixes have Moti. been so good. Moti. Ankari? Moti Ankari. No, seriously, who's it with? Moti. Why, Spell it. M O T I. Oh. I'll click the link in my email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play it. Let's get to the Listen now. Okay, I'll listen on Spotify. Her remixes are have really big. Might have like, to go for a run today. For the treadmill girlies. Just wait. Give it a second. Maybe I wouldn't start running yet. I would just be walking still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three, five. Chugging my water. Heavy breathing. Check my phone. Oh. Oh, I like it. All right, here's a chorus. Three, two, three, two, one. Uh-oh, it's giving Ben Safa. Oh, oh, The beat's oh. about to drop in a big way. All right, don't make a meal of it, like. Okay. 
It's just like okay. not my kind of remix. <laughs> there was so much potential. And the beat never dropped. It's like the most annoying thing. I mean, Moti's just not like the DJ for me. I, it's giving like Vegas club. Like yeah, yeah. the beat never drops. No. When did we stop making music for the treadmill? Like when I think back to like old school beats, like they all were treadmill songs. Now like beat culture has gotten so far out of control. No, it's their club songs. Exactly. I said we stopped making it for the treadmills. Yeah. No, they they stopped. For sure. And they would admit if I was that. A They're DJ, for like the festivals, Tomorrowland. If I was a DJ, I'd be DJ Tread. And that would be the vibe. Got it. And maybe we could collab and we could do mashups. Would love. You would be DJ Mash and I'd be DJ Tread. And we would mash together. Tread Mash. We would be the mashup. We would be the mashup. Are you ready for our next story? If it's the next story that's brought to you by Mattress Firm. While getting enough sleep at night remains crucial, research indicates that brief 10 to 30 minute power naps can also boost alertness and immediate functioning, particularly those under 20 minutes. These short naps enhance alertness and motor learning skills like typing and playing instruments. To energize post-nap, consider stepping outside for sunlight or having caffeinated drinks eight hours before bedtime for a quick Pick me up. So Mattress Firm is here with all the facts, statistics, and things you need to know when it comes to getting the absolute best night's rest, best naps, and also just feeling like yourself. And you know, daylight savings this week, changes in your schedule, if you travel, like all these things are, they're trying to interrupt our sleep and Mattress Firm is not going to let that happen. Mattress Firm has everything that you need when it comes to bedtime, when it comes to sleeping, when it comes to feeling refreshed and feeling good. So head over to mattressfirm.com or your local mattress firm to find the best deals, you know? Mattress Firm's friends and family sale right now for extra savings on top of can't miss deals. The right mattress matters. Mattress Firm will find yours during the friends and family sale, score extra discounts on top brands. They have a treat for you this spring, extra savings, and those can't miss deals. So head to mattressfirm.com or head to uh, your local mattress firm. My mattress firm is from, actually my last two mattresses have been from mattress firm. I've been in different tax brackets both times, so they've really been taking care of me at mattress firm. Um, restrictions apply. Head to Mattress Firm's friends and family sale in store and online at mattressfirm.com. Today's episode is brought to you by Macy's. Join Macy's and Girls Inc. to empower a new generation of leaders now during Women's History Month. Throughout March, you can help fund STEM college and career readiness programs for girls when you donate to Girls Inc. Or round up your purchase. You can shop women-owned and founded brands like Cali Cosmetics, New Face, Better Not Younger. So learn more and celebrate the creative power of women now and all year round at Macy's.com slash purpose. And with Easter coming up, and it's actually coming up early this year, get everything you need to host Easter on Sunday, March 31st and get it at Macy's. From pastel outfits for the whole family to brunch-ready serveware, Macy's has got you covered. They also have Toys R Us Easter basket goodies from books to stuffed animals and even slime. Find it all in store and online at macy's.com plus spring means wedding season if your calendar is filled up with wedding invitations check that off your to-do list at macy's they've got the latest spring dresses shoes jewelry clutches so you can pull together a look for any dress code and you can slay the house down at wedding guest season are you the one preparing for your big day are you a bride well Check out Macy's Wedding Shop to help you get celebration ready at macy's.com slash wedding shop. So everything spring related, Macy's has got you covered from Easter, from wedding, from everything. Head to macy's.com. You won't regret your purchases. It's really the one-stop shop for everything from beauty to fashion to home to decor. Check it out at macy's.com. That's M-A-C-Y-S dot com. Thank you. A pleasure. Our next story, some loser news from Instagram. Ugh. And a little roundup on the story of the week, Kate Middleton, because Instagram has added an altered photo warning to Kate Middleton's Mother's Day photo. So Instagram added an altered photo warning to Kate Middleton's Mother's Day photo with her three kids after she admitted to editing the picture. Right underneath the picture, it now says altered photo slash video. The same altered photo was reviewed by independent fact checkers in another post. Okay, like, haha, getting in on the fun. But like, why don't they ever put these sort of warnings on like actual propaganda when it comes to the Middle East like please oh yeah I mean that's for sure but I'm just on a more uh, analogous level even it's like okay so you want to start calling out everyone who alters their photos every face tune no, every but it's everything also like, 
so much meme culture. And by the way, there is a conversation like to be had about, you know, these platforms responsibility to verifying whatever. Um, and starting with Kate Middleton, like qu- question right. mark. No, but their responsibility to verify what? Like photo editing? Yeah, I don't know. It's giving loser. Everyone giving- edits their photos. Like every influencer edits their photos to some degree. No, uh, yeah, Not me. Of course, I do. I don't bother uh, anymore. No, oh, I do. No, every photo you've ever seen of me, like I don't really? look like that. Oh, oh yeah. Even Not these my body. Days? Yeah, no. Back in the day, I and now I st- like at my time hop LC. Like, oh my god, I was so crazy with my body. Now I've, I, I think it's part of losing weight, but also part of getting older. Like just accepting that this is my body. Yeah. Um, my face. Yeah. No. By the way, like I edit. Like, and I, I'm not gonna stop. And I'm not. Hi- and I'm not hiding it. Okay. Like it's not a secret. Fuck yeah. off. Like, but, okay, I like it. But it's like, okay, so she did some Photoshopping and the hand, the wrist was missing. So you want to put an al- altered photo on it. But like, so where would you draw the line? Instagram. I'm asking Instagram. Like on a waist brought in, on a filter. Yeah. Like it's a slippery slope and it's giving thirsty. It is giving thirsty. Like wanting to join the conversation. Ha ha, Kate Middleton. Where is she? Like, fuck off. I do think that they could do like a blanket statement and issue a warning on photos that are generated by AI. No, by the way, they should. And I think the perfect example is like, and it was it was kind of harmless, but it really scared me. This was the first time I was like, damn, do you remember that picture of the Pope wearing like a puffer jacket? Yeah. It was reported everywhere and then it turned out to be AI. Like that was a warning for me where it's like, wow, I really cannot trust what I see online. When you post something on Instagram, it should definitely go through some sort of, it takes what, two minutes to post a photo? It's been taking so long recently too. Like it should, you know, scan it for ai i completely agree yeah but then you shouldn't be able to post ai generated photos on the inter on social media platforms without the social media platform picking up on it and putting some sort of just like little generated by ai yeah yeah there needs to be a distinction like i see totally non-nefarious ai content like uh it's not harmful those King Charles Cavaliers from different countries. Like that was so cute. I want to see more of that. Like I like that content. I just want to know. I I mean, I knew it wasn't real, but there are other things that could be more confusing. 1000%. Every social media platform, when a photo gets uploaded, should have an automatic scanner if this was generated by AI. And then it just gets like a little community note. Yeah, that's nice. So why they've decided to start with Kate Middleton is like it's giving you know bad faith action it's giving I want to get in on the action hey look at me I'm still here exactly I don't like it mm-hmm. well our fifth and final story is a bit of a throwback but it's an occasion worth celebrating okay I could give you 1,000 guesses and you would never guess what it was okay but it doesn't make it any less important okay Elizabeth Smart is marking the 21st anniversary of her kidnapping rescue I um, saw this video while she put, like in real time on TikTok. I watched the whole thing. She said, always be a reminder that miracles happen. So today, Elizabeth Smart is marking the 21st anniversary of her rescue. Yesterday. After being kidnapped. Yesterday, technically. The activist and commentator and influencer who was abducted from her home in Salt Lake City at the age of 14 in June 20. 20- 2002 shared a TikTok video on Tuesday to mark the date of her rescue. She said, today is March 12th. Okay, so three days ago. Oh, LOL. And it will always be a reminder that miracles happen and that there are dreams that come true and that good things are abundant in this world. I actually, like when I had watched a video, I got chills. Like that was such a, an important thing that happened in our childhood. It was such a major news story. And I think like we were around the same age. Like it was just... It was just one of those stories that took the nation by storm, specifically yeah. moms and, and daughters. And oh my God, the how long was she? Nine uh, months held oh, hostage. That like the fact that she was returned home safely, like that those like the stories just never ended that way. It was such a crazy. And she's right; like her story is emblematic, for lack of a better word, of hope. Yeah, and miracles. And it was just ah, oh, so crazy. So crazy. Do you see her a lot on the app? No, but she has a significant presence. Well, that's a fault of the algorithm. Another reason why TikTok should be sold off into parts. Agreed. Agreed. Or banned. She's beautiful. You know, she has children. Like, it's... And she's an activist now. It's for what? Like, parents against something like that? Yeah, you would think so. Not like moms against... For what? Child safety. Child safety. That makes sense. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if she remembers those nine months. Has she blocked them out? Like, 
I don't know. I don't know, but I'm happy to be celebrating this momentous occasion. Who did it end up being again? Like someone who had worked on their like, uh, home or something. Home. I th- he was like a ch- grifter, like charity case. I can't. I think something like that. So crazy. Well, you know, wishing Elizabeth Smart well today and every day. An armed street pastor. Pastor? Yeah. Armed as in he was a pastor with a gun? I think that's, yeah. No, I can't. Um, Okay. Those were the Fast Five stories. You needed to know them on such a deep emotional level. But the show is not over because it is time for Weenie of the Week. That's right. Our weekly segment where Jackie and I deliver the absolute honor to one human being of being Weenie of the Week. Something they did this week. Weenie. Weenie of the Week. We also do Queenie of the Week because we don't want to be so negative. Queenie of the Week where we give the honor of somebody who did something Queenie-like this week. Let's start with Queenie because I think it'll take up less time. I was going to say Vanessa Ann Hudgens. But Just, she she came across my desk. But now I feel like saying Elizabeth Smart, Queenie of the Week. Oh, see, sometimes the stories can inform the, the recipient. Right. Who's yours? So I wasn't 100% sure. Mm. All right, it's going to be a tie. No? Okay. You know what? I'm going to be serious. My Queenie of the Week is Olivia Munn. Queenie. Oh, my God. Sorry. Queenie. My, let me say that again. My queen of the week is Olivia Munn. I was really sort of struck by her announcement. Yeah. I feel like, and it also, I think, it's very rare. People are always like, well, I wanted to share, like, to help other people. People always say that, and it's like, please, you're not helping anybody. <laughs> but I will say, I feel like Olivia Munn is this, like, young, hot thing, and it really reminded people to get checked. Like, yeah. I think and a lot of people made appointments for mammograms after seeing that, and that's queenie shit. And also that, like, breast cancer... Um, at risk score like you should like have your doctor calculate I think if people haven't been doing that something that you should definitely tell your doctor that we didn't know before I just thought it was so brave and I feel like she's been suffering a lot and people are really mean to her on the internet because she like you know married had a baby with someone who used to be married to someone else like they're really awful to her and I just think you know she deserves a queenie moment and this was queenie shit Olivia Munn I agree now, I will say a runner up for Queenie was Hoda because I love, I'm like, the story of Hoda's new man has really just like made me laugh this week. And yes, Hoda, like, it's never too late. No, I totally agree. And another runner up, and now it was written down, but I was never going to really truly give it, but I wanted to mention was you. I just feel like you've been giving Queenie energy this week. And when I couldn't think of anybody else, I just said you. An honorable mention to me. That's just a good policy going forward. Like, when we can't think of anyone, it's us. When in doubt, you. Oh my God, thank you. What great company to be in. Yeah, Hoda, Olivia, and Jax. And Vanessa Hudgens and Elizabeth Smart. Right. Now, Weenie of the Week, which is always more fun. Drum roll, please. In a shock to absolutely nobody, my Weenie of the Week is that curly-headed fuck Mark Ruffalo. My actual nemesis, just pray, Mark Ruffalo, get on your knees every night that you never run into me. Because if I do, it's going to be a battle to the death. Yeah. My weenie of the week are the artists for Ceasefire in general. Last night, Renee Rapp. The what? Artists for Ceasefire. Artists for Ceasefire. Yeah, Renee Rapp. Last night, Renee Rapp added herself to the list at the GLAAD Awards where she read off of her phone a pre-prepared statement. Tacky. So, and I'm sh- I like Renee Rapp a lot. This was a tough loss for my for my community. It's tacky to read anything off your phone as far as giving a speech like you put it on a piece of paper come on like I know that Duh. it's a modern age but like get a piece of paper it's the right thing to do so the one that was the one part of her speech that was like from her phone and then she went off phone and it's like who wrote that you couldn't even string the words together on your own like what do you even know what you're saying she advocated for a permanent ceasefire and lasting without, once ever acknowledging the hostages so good to know where you stand Renee and literally in the next breath she said never stop advocating for that and never stop advocating for your queer friends do you know what's happening to your queer friends in Gaza Renee like don't be dumb like to to literally in the same sentence contradict yourself so strongly really indicates a lack of education on the matter which I really feel a lot of these artists are just kind of falling into but I'm sorry like you have a responsibility to do better and advocate for what's right no and if you don't have information or knowledge on the subject like why the fuck are you speaking on it like yeah, seriously it's what so if you simple. just 
shut the fuck up. What if you, you know? just like stuck to what you know? And if yeah. you want to stick to other things, maybe know about them. Yeah, so that was greatly disappointing. That um, was insane. That was one of, it actually, that one to me was funny. Like I had a chuckle and I'm sure, yeah, Netanyahu saw that. Renee Rapp called for ceasefire, permanent and lasting. Lay down your arms. Thank you, Renee I, Rapp. I really like you being a little bit more general with your winning of the week, just sort of all the artists for ceasefire. Yeah, because I, I don't want to discriminate Billie Eilish. She's in there. Renee, Phineas, no, Rami. Have, and of course yours. I knew you were going to go hard with him. I There's something about Mark Jonathan Glazer. Case. Jonathan I'm, Glazer. I'm mad because like, I don't, there, Mark Ruffalo's in like a lot of things that I like, like of course like 13 going and 30. I can live without that. Like a film like I actually don't want to live without is just like heaven. Like that's annoying. Bye-bye, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Also Jonathan Glazer, uh, obviously a weenie of the week, but I really feel as though he's united a lot of the Jewish community. So I much so I was reading an article today, an executive producer on Zone of Interest was on a podcast and he, uh, disagrees he was like what Jonathan said like I do not agree with oh wow um you said you know all the right things of things. what we all agree on that Israel has every right to defend itself against its genocidal neighbors and she'll continue yep. doing so oh was um, a woman no I think it's a he did I say she her oh, she oh, Israel to me is a woman what about you like America oh, I'm sorry I thought you were saying the producer was she okay sorry, sorry. <laughs> pronouns are hard yeah, no, and by the way, countries are feminine, yes. Yes, so that's what he was saying. And then in the article, they they wanted to cite like other people who were with Jonathan Glazer. And they cite Jewish Voices for Peace, which everyone knows is not a Jewish voice whatsoever, which is an extremist organization. It's like, if that's the only people who are backing what you said, like you're yeah. so far gone. So I'm sure you guys have seen the Instagram account Jewish Voices for Peace. Just know it's literally not started by Jews. It's actually a conspiracy theory into finding out like who actually started it. Not one Jewish person is associated with it, but they actually use it as like a parroting, like, look, Jews want, you know, a ceasefire. Yeah, it's like, like all those nutty ceasefire groups that are like protesting and barricading. There's like Jewish Voices for Peace in there. So then and they're like, this is what the Jews want. It's not anti-Semitic to be no, anti-Zionist. Jewish Voices for Peace is not Jewish voices whatsoever. Yeah, no, we don't claim or know them. It's nutty ass Voices for Peace. It's giving Nature Carta Voices for Peace, you know? Oh, yeah, that's another one. I can't, I can't get into Other Nature Carta of the right week. now. Honestly, they, there's a time and place for Nature Carta. I can't, like seriously, emotionally, I can't talk about Nature Carta right now. Yeah, but just keep making shows about them, yeah? Yeah. Acting right. like they're the voice of the Jewish community. You guys, it's been such a gorgeous week hanging out with you guys. We've had highs, we've had lows, we've had belly laughs, we've had, you know, we've cried. Did we? I don't know. I feel like maybe at one point when I was talking about Theo, maybe that was last week. I got like, a oh, yeah, yeah, out. that was early on in the show. Okay, we cried. Yeah. Yeah. Add it to the we list. Cried. And that's just the sort of whole rounded emotional experience this podcast is going to take you on. So thank you for being here. Thank you so much for listening to the Toast of the Millennial Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give us a video a thumbs up. We're also available as podcasts and where podcasts can be found on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, I Radio, Castbox, all the places where we listen to podcasts. Find us at Toast, leave a fast story, but I'm double sending in. Oh, goodly talented we are. Love you dearly. Bye-bye.